everybody from NRG Stadium in Houston, Texas, the home of the Houston Texans of the National Football League tonight, the site of the AdvoCare Texas kickoff. The only game of this opening weekend, matching two teams ranked in the top 15 in the country, and it has a bowl game atmosphere. A sellout crowd of 71,000 on hand to watch number 14, Wisconsin, take on number 13, LSU. I'm joined by Chris Spielman and Todd McShay down on the sidelines. Les Miles beginning his 10th season as head coach at LSU. Winning his coach by percentage in the history of the Tiger program. He's won almost 80% of his games. Gary Anderson was 9-4 in his first season in Madison last year. Disappointing finish as they lost their last two, including their bowl game against South Carolina. One of the big stories of this night, the debut of the freshman Leonard Fournette, the number one prospect in the country according to ESPN's rankings out of St. Augustine in New Orleans, and he's back for the opening kickoff from Andrew Endicott. Wisconsin won the toss in deferred. It comes down to Fournette. He bounced off a hit of the 11 and then got taken down from behind by Dare Ogunbulwe at the 15-yard line. Nice special teams coverage by the Badgers. A lot of similarities, Chris, between these two teams, including the unsettled quarterback situation. It was up in the air during the preseason, and LSU to start the year is going to go with Anthony Jennings, the sophomore, 19 years old, started one game, their bowl game last year, in which they beat Iowa. If you want to play in Les Smiles' program as the quarterback, don't make mistakes. They feel like he's the guy that's going to be safe with the football. They do expect to see the true freshman Brandon Harris as well. LSU opens in the eye. They will be a power running team again this year. Connor Neighbors, the fullback, leading the way for Kenny Hilliard. And Derek Landish, a linebacker, made the tackle at the 20. Here's a look at tonight's Chick-fil-A impact players. And it'll be running back by committee, Hilliard and McGee along with Fournette. And on the defensive side, you see Landis and Sojourn. LSU went quickly to the line. Kenny Hilliard again, tackled by Michael Caputo. Only three returning starters on this Wisconsin defense. That's another similarity between these two teams. They lost a lot of talent from a year ago. LSU had nine players drafted, the most in the NFL draft. But it is a very talented, inexperienced LSU team. Out of the gun now, Anthony Jennings. He keeps after the fake to McGee and has the first down across the 25. Caputo, one of their returning starters, made the tackle. Well, the versatility of Cam Cameron's offense, you see a little bit of a spread-type movement, the speed read option run by Jennings, executed well, did not give the ball to McGee, decided to keep it to get the first down. Jennings from Marietta, Georgia, a sophomore, 6'2", 216 pounds. The toss back to Terrence McGee, and he got stuffed to the line of scrimmage by Marcus Trotter. It's a 3-4 defense for Wisconsin. Trotter, one of the inside linebackers. They're in the process, Sean, of downsizing, meaning they're going with lighter, faster guys, and that's the matchup to watch tonight. If the lighter Wisconsin front seven can handle the power in the size of LSU's offensive line. It's basically an all-new front seven on defense for Wisconsin. Here's Leonard Fournette perhaps going to get his first carry from scrimmage. He does. Big, powerful, and fast. And he's out to the 31. Caputo and Marcus Trotter made the tackle. It'll be third down and five for LSU. It's good to get Fournette the football. He got his hands on a kickoff return, but you want to settle the youngster's nerves, and you can see that he's built for power. Strong lower body and does have that breakaway speed. They've waited a long time for him. Les Miles jokes that they offered him a scholarship when he was in the third grade. Jennings out of the gun, under pressure. It's a screen, and it is incomplete off the hands of McGee, and Derek Landish was nearby for Wisconsin. 
The one first down on the first possession of the night for LSU, and it'll be a Tiger punt. Well, they were anticipating blitz, and they did get it, but Derek Landish is playing man-to-man -man and does an outstanding job of peeling off his blitz to cover McGee on the screen. So now the Australian Jamie Keene on the punt. Second-year starting punter. Penzel Doe back for it for Wisconsin. And it goes out of bounds. The excellent kick. Where are they going to mark it? The official on the far sideline. A stroll. Yeah, he's the LSU fans are a little annoyed as he continues to walk. And they've settled on the 24-yard line. It's Big 12 officiating crew in this game between the Big Ten and the SEC. And we welcome you to Houston. Sean McDonough, Chris Spielman joined in a moment by Todd McShay. Terrific way to start the season. If you were a coach, perhaps it's not a great way to start the season because a lot of unknowns on these two teams, a lot of similarities. Yeah, and you look at it, that's a good start for Wisconsin's defense because of the new front seven to get LSU to punt that first series. It's kind of back to the 80s, Sean. Old power football. High backs, full backs, tight ends. And then McAvoy gets his first career start at quarterback for Wisconsin. And he has the benefit of having one of the best running backs in the country, perhaps the best, behind him in Melvin Gordon, who got banged around but made his way to the 32-yard line for a gain of eight on his first of many carries this season. Wisconsin's quarterback situation was up in the air in the preseason. McAvoy won the battle with the incumbent starter, Joel Stavi. Melvin Gordon, 1,609 yards last year, only Amir Abdullah of Nebraska rushed for more last season and has returned. Trouble with the snap for McAvoy. And that's a loss. Back to the 30. And he has to be excited. Chris came in as a quarterback prospect but didn't win the job last summer. So they made him first a wide receiver. Then he hurt his left wrist and he became a safety. Moved back to quarterback in the spring. And Gary Anderson wants to eventually transition into some of that spread element. And Tanner McAvoy is the type of quarterback that they're looking for that true dual threat guy. Much more of a running threat than was Joel Stavi. Third down and four, big loss of two on that mishandled snap. McAvoy, good throw. Set his feet and threw a strike for a first down to Alex Erickson. And another common trait between these two schools of all new wide receiver core for the most part on both sides. Now, what a confidence builder. Good call by Andy Ludwig seeing man coverage running a quick slant. And I love the way Fredrickson went up there and snagged it with his hands as opposed to body catching. High formation now. You love those fullbacks. We'll see plenty of fullback play on both sides tonight. Good old fashioned power run football. Derek Watt is the fullback. Gordon slipped as he tried to make his cut. Jalen Mills up from his safety spot to force the play. Good job of discipline by Jalen Mills. Did not overreact on the misdirection. Stayed his responsibility, which was the cutback and in position to make the play along with the 33-yard line. <laughs> Field turf surface here tonight. The Texans, when they play their home games, play on natural grass that slides in and out on trays. But... This facility also has a field turf that it keeps stored nearby, and they use it for other events, high school games, other college games. Out of the gun, McAvoy. Gordon turns the corner and has running room. But along the far sideline, he's knocked out of bounds at the 45 of LSU by the safety, Ronald Martin. A gain of 20. Well, what's Sam Arson, number 49? He's going to take care of the contained player. Jalen Mills and Melvin Gordon is one guy in the Big Ten could match SEC speed for SEC speed. He has that breakaway ability, but all set up by Sam Arneson, the tight end, blocking the safety and pinning him inside. Last year, Gordon was part of a dynamic duo with James White, who's now a New England Patriot. This year, it'll be Corey Clement sharing the load with Gordon. And they handed it off on the fly sweep to Reggie Love, and Love is in the end zone. Touchdown, Wisconsin, 45 yards.
Rafael Galeanone, his first kick as a Wisconsin Badger, true freshman from Brazil. It's a PAT that's up and good. Terrific start for Wisconsin. Reggie Love, his first career touchdown, having a 76-yard drive. Kickoff week. We welcome you back to ESPN's College Football Primetime presented by Hampton Hotels. The 2014 Advocare Texas kickoff from NRG Stadium in Houston. Terrific start for Wisconsin. The Badgers score in their first possession. And lead 7 to nothing as Andrew Endicott will kick off. Reggie loved the touchdown. It's a surprise he's here. He was running out of chances in the Wisconsin program the coaches had warned him he was basically down to his final strike and they were telling him he should start thinking about other places to play and then he really turned it around particularly off the field showing up on time etc. Fournette brought the kickoff back to the 27 yard line. Let's find out how Wisconsin found success tonight. Brought to you by Expedia. You know, a big concern for defensive coordinator John Chavis was getting outflanked by motions. Take a look right here. Quan Alexander, the defensive end, both get caught up inside. That's two guys in one gap. Now watch. They'll knock each other off the play, which creates the space. And again, blocking downfield. Outstanding effort by Sam Arneson. Getting his big body on a little body. And love. Shows a lot of love by scoring six. Fly sweep was a huge weapon last year for Wisconsin. Melvin Gordon ran it very well. It is a veteran offensive line on each side. Jennings threw it out into the flat to Kenny Hilliard, and he has an LSU first down, gained just more than 10. Sojourn Shelton made the stop for Wisconsin. There's a mistake by the Vince Beagle, the linebacker coming up and forcing the throw he has to extend that play force Jennings to hold the football so he doesn't have a clear path for the easy dish to the sidelines back to the eye with Connor neighbors in front of Kenny Hilliard it's the nephew of the great LSU star in New Orleans St. Dalton Hilliard got upended as he reached the 40 Conrad Zagzebski a little bit slow to get up and they have very little depth along the defensive line that is one of Gary Anderson's biggest concerns to start the year senior for the most part a backup throughout his career he does have 31 career games in which he's played prior to tonight and one thing about his position the nose guard position in order to be an effective 3-4 defense you have to be stout in the middle and you see Zach Zespi making a good play running down the line of scrimmage and it looks like he got his head jammed inside Caputo comes low you can see right there he got the top of his head maybe jammed his neck a little bit as they tend to Conrad will step aside nearly midway through the first quarter in Houston All right, Reese, thank you. And here in Houston, the medical personnel for Wisconsin still tending to the defensive end, Conrad Zagzebski. They're going to immobilize him and place him on the stretcher. The good news is we have seen him moving his legs. The fifth year senior, for the most part, has been a backup player throughout his career, but Expected to play much more as a fifth-year senior. They lost Bo Allen, a uh, standout in the middle of their defensive front from a year ago. He got drafted by the Philadelphia Eagles. Obviously, Chris, the foremost concern is for the right. well-being of the young man, but it is really also a position at which they can't afford to lose key players. Especially against a team like this tonight that's going to try to test them by running it right down their throats. What that's going to force Wisconsin to do defensively is move Warren Herring, who's a defensive end, has some nose guard experience because that position is so vital when you want to operate the 3-4. And I'm just I'm looking down here in the field, Sean, and I'm reminded of a couple of things. One in 1991 when a teammate of mine, Mike Utley, 
who Mike's doing well now, but was uh, carted off the field. And this is the worst part of football for me because I actually, my career ended with a neck injury. And I know what that's like, and I know how scary that can be. But uh, hopefully the young man will be fine and good sportsmanship on both sides as you see both teams kneeling as they should. Yeah, both teams off the sideline onto the field and demonstrating their concern for Conrad Zegzebski. And Chris, we talk about the impact on Wisconsin, and it is a front seven that that is the biggest concern that they have as a team starting the year. Only three starters back on defense. A lot of people are surprised that they're ranked as high as they are in the preseason, given the really total rebuild they have to do of this defense. Well, in talking with Dave Aranda, the defensive coordinator yesterday, he didn't know what he was going to get. But they want to build smaller. They want to get quicker and have a mobile quarterback on offense, which is pretty much anti-Wisconsin. And Wisconsin's defense, Sean, as you know, is known for this big defensive lineman and linebackers like Chris Boylan that run around and make plays. But they feel this is how they progress the program forward, by getting smaller and faster. Yeah, Dave Aranda thought last year they played really their best defense when they just didn't move around too much, didn't try to get too tricky played a lot of base defense. This year, second year in the program, the players understand the system better. They are smaller, but they hope more athletic. I think you'll see a lot more yeah. back to what he wants to be, moving around, a lot of blitzing, a lot of trying to confuse the other team's offense. And it's because of that understanding that he's starting to implement and feel more comfortable and take advantage of the zone pressures. The 3-4 defense allows you to bring blitzers from five different spots, both outside linebackers, both inside linebackers, and a strong safety, Caputo, which is the eighth man in the box. And they're taking Zagzebski off the field now. And as soon as Todd McShay can get a report, of course, he'll pass along the information from the field. Wisconsin sold about 15,000 tickets to this game. The Badgers well represented, but this stadium in Houston is only about four and a half hours from the LSU campus in Baton Rouge. They sold 35,000 tickets through their athletic department and undoubtedly many more through other means. It is essentially a home game in terms of the crowd. The city of Houston is the largest alumni base for LSU outside of the state of Louisiana. And you could feel the electric atmosphere when we came on the air. First game of the year, two teams with high hopes. And obviously, a lot of the emotion has gone out of the building as all of the fans now on their feet and applauding Conrad Zegzebski as he heads off. I'll tell you, the training staffs nowadays, Sean, in this type of situation, you see that they remove the face mask or are so well versed in handling this type of injury that they take every necessary precaution to not uh, injure the kid even more. We saw he was giving the thumbs up as he was going off, and the people here in the stadium could see that on the big screens. And the applause got noticeably louder when that happened. So hopefully it's just a precaution. The other thing that does is it gives relief to his teammates mm -hmm. so they can go out and play so they're not focused on their buddy in the locker room. Second down and seven now for LSU. The Tigers at their own 40, trailing seven to nothing as we tick down to eight minutes to go in the first quarter. Anthony Jennings handed it off to Kenny Hilliard. Gain of about two. Jake Kiefer has come in on the defensive line for Wisconsin, and they get even smaller up front. Zach Zebski was 277 pounds, and Kiefer's 269. It's a big offensive line for LSU with two great tackles. Cam Cameron, the offensive coordinator, says we expect our offensive tackles, Lyle Collins and Gerald Hawkins, to be dominant. Not only against this team, but all year long. Jennings throws incomplete behind his intended receiver, Traven Doral. And the coverage from Sojourn Shelton. It's outstanding coverage. It's third and four. Automatically, you're thinking as a defense, all right, we're not going to give him the first, so what are we going to do? We trust our guys to play tight man-to-man, -man, jammed them at the line of scrimmage. Doral was not able to create space, forcing the underthrow. 
Jamie Keene, short wobbly punt to the near sideline. And that wasn't good at all. And the side judge stops at the 39-yard line. Just a 19-yard punt. And a timeout with 7.14 to go in the first quarter. Here this evening, outside Energy Stadium, more than 200 servicemen and women and their families attended a tailgate put on in their honor, hosted by the good folks at Kingsford Charcoal. Outside what you might expect in Houston at this time of the year, a hot and muggy evening. It was about 90 degrees earlier today. But climate control underneath the dome. Wisconsin ball for the second time. The Badgers leading 7 to nothing. Melvin Gordon ahead for about a yard and a half. Juan Alexander the tackle. Here's Todd McShay. Well, you know, the, all the information we've gotten so far is that they did, for precautionary reasons, take him to Methodist Hospital. It's in the medical center district, if you will, three miles away from here. And he's with his father. Conrad had his father in attendance. His dad came down on the field. and. His dad is obviously going with him to the hospital. They didn't want to tell us any more in terms of what the exact injury was, but he obviously had motion in his extremities, and they're bringing him to the hospital for precautionary reasons. All right, thank you, Todd. Conrad Zygzebski, the defensive lineman for Wisconsin. Here's McAvoy, a big reason why he is their starting quarterback. That's a dimension that Joel Stabe does not bring. And he scampered all the way to the LSU 37-yard line. First down, Badgers. You know, the most impressive thing about this is he's got a 6-6 frame on him. And he moves and reminds me a little bit of Terrell Pryor, the former Ohio State quarterback, which was the same size. He took his eyes off the receivers a little bit early, but he trusts his feet to do the work in which they did. And J.J. Watt down there springing him with a nice block. There's Joel Stabe, who was their quarterback last year for all... 13 games and led them to a 9 and 4 record. He's certainly a solid player. McAvoy. Got his signals crossed with Reggie Love. A sign of the inexperience of the connections when you have new starting quarterbacks, new starting receivers. Sometimes they're not on the same page. Well, if you're going to throw it away, throw it away big. And he did. Well, McAvoy's had a very interesting career in high school, a great program in New Jersey, Bergen Catholic. He was a wide receiver and a defensive back and a very good player at both of those positions until his senior year in high school when his coaches moved him to quarterback and he became a top prospect after just one year at the quarterback position. On second down, Melvin Gordon turned ahead to the 33 for a gain of four. McAvoy was so good, in fact, he got recruited and went to South Carolina. Spent a redshirt year with Steve Spurrier, but was buried on the depth chart. Didn't like his chances for playing. So he went on to Arizona Western College in Yuma, where he got the chance to play and took advantage of it. How about those numbers? Passed for 2,300, ran for 472, and was his conference player of the year in the Arizona Community College Athletic Conference for the Matadors of Arizona Western. Then came to Wisconsin last year, didn't win the QB job, and played safety. He played pretty well. He's in trouble now and throws it away on third down and six. The pressure came from LSU. Excellent job. Ricky Jefferson covering down on the screen. Good recognition. Understanding third and six are going to go short passes. They come up with man, and McAvoy did handle the pressure well, didn't panic, and was able to throw it away. Rafael Galeanone, freshman from Brazil. An interesting story that we'll tell you as the night goes along. His first career field goal attempt. He has a strong leg, long enough to make a 51-yarder for certain. And how about that? <laughs> Boom! Right down the middle. The players marvel at his confidence. He's a soccer player originally from Brazil and Early in training camp, every time he went out to try a field goal and win the job, they started chanting ole, 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 yeah. like they were in a soccer game, and it didn't bother him one bit. I just thought you were going to say, goal! 51-yarder. Gary Anderson says he can make one to 60, maybe even a little bit beyond, and that would have been good from 60-plus. The 
Advocate care car brought the game ball out nice. to midfield. The referee Mike Defee. Sean, I really think that they need to have Anthony Jennings start throwing the ball on first down. They're having trouble handling Wisconsin's movement to loosen them up, throw the ball on first down. Andrew Endicott kicks off. Leonard Fournette again. And the Badgers kickoff coverage continues to be outstanding. He got walloped by Leon Jacobs, the backup linebacker, right along the 20-yard line. LSU 10-3 a year ago, their fourth straight season of 10 wins or more, longest such streak in school of history. And they're the first conference team in the SEC ever with a 3,000-yard passer, a 1,000-yard rusher, and two 1,000-yard receivers. The bad news, they all went to the NFL as LSU for the second year in a row had nine players selected in the NFL draft. 82 percent of their total offense gone. Zach Mettenberger was the quarterback. Now Jennings was his backup is the starter this year and he lobs it and the man is open. Javon Durrell in a foot race with Shelton and Durrell wins it. 80 yard touchdown the first score of the year for LSU. Love the call. Well, you said it, throw on first down, they did. And Durrell was wide open. Wisconsin scrambling to get men on the field for the extra point. Up and good by Colby Delahousie. 80 yard touchdown to the sophomore Durrell. Entertaining start to this. Advocare Texas kickoff big part of Dick Sporting Goods kickoff week Wisconsin led 10 to nothing but LSU's just scored on an 80 yard touchdown pass Trent Domingue kicks off down to the two to Kenzel Doe and he's in trouble and down inside the 10 Juan Alexander leading the kickoff coverage for the LSU Tigers just a six yard return but when you start a true freshman free safety, if he makes a mistake, it can cause problems. Now, a couple things happen right here. Doral does not quit on the route. When his quarterback, Jennings, scrambles, he readjusts. Figaro jumps up inside, loses sight of Doral, and nobody's going to catch him from behind. But that's the danger of starting a free safety because if he makes a mistake, there's no covering up. The mistake usually is this. Six points, and they're dancing. The veterans returning in the secondary with the exception of Fagaro, who's replaced Desmond Southward, who was the safety last year for Wisconsin, was a third-round pick by the Falcons. Corey Clement is the running back. Tanner McAvoy handed it off to him. Four returning starters on the offensive line for Wisconsin, and they bowled forward to help him gain about four. D.J. Welter. Made the tackle for LSU. Wisconsin's philosophy on offense, they come at you with a lot of different personnel groupings, different number of tight ends, different number of backs, and they do a lot of motion and shifting to try to confuse the defense, something that John Chavis was worried about last night when we spoke to him. Chavis is the defensive coordinator for LSU. McAvoy, given time. Now throws to the near sideline, and it's nearly intercepted by Jalen Mills. Eric Steffes, part of that deep tight end group, was the intended receiver. You know, the thing that's jumping out to me, just being down here on the field level, with this LSU defense, yes, there's inexperience, but there's so much speed. And on all these passing plays, these receivers are covered up so quickly. There's no separation being created by the Wisconsin wide receivers. You look for Tanner McAvoy to use his legs to get yards on the ground somehow. 
Clapping his hands for the snap that almost surprised him. Now he throws a deep ball, and it is incomplete. Intended for Alex Erickson, and Jalen Collins was just about running stride for stride. But you know what that does to me? That shows me that he's on target with a deep ball. Fredrickson had a step on him, and that ball was catchable. But that puts confidence in Andy Ludwig to come back to that type of play. Drew Meyer is the punter, junior from Heartland, Wisconsin. He was their punter last year. Tends to hang them up high. Only 13 of his 53 punts were returned a year ago. So Davius White back for the punt. Short, wobbly. And White with flags down is upended at the 34-yard line. Good catch on the run by White. Sam Arneson made the tackle. There is a flag on the field. 35-yard punt, 12-yard return. And we'll start. During the return, illegal block in the back. Return team, number 23. 10-yard penalty, first down. Starting to feel the LSU fan base to get back in this energized at NRG Stadium. Lamar Lewis guilty of the penalty. They'll bring the ball back near midfield. They'll spot it at the Wisconsin 48. Something has to give tonight. LSU's won 11 straight season openers. All nine of the prior season openers under Les Miles. Wisconsin's won 16 straight on opening day. That is the third longest streak in the country. Only Nebraska and Florida longer streaks on opening day or night. Jennings kept it. It was a run and now he's running for his life and he's taken down back in LSU territory. Led by Darius Hillary, the corner with help from Derek Landish. If you don't run the read option, this can happen. Your quarterback can make a bad read. He had two guys coming off the edge. Darius Hillary on a, basically a corner blitz. He should have gave the ball to Fournette. It's a poor read because you're not used to seeing it all the time. Jennings' only career start was in the bowl game, the Outback Bowl, a win over Iowa. They had a very conservative game plan in that one. Leonard Fournette. Hasn't been able to get it going as a collegian so far in less than a full quarter. Marcus Trotter made the tackle. Also a good job by Warren Herring, number 45, playing a defensive end position now on passing downs. He goes to the nose guard so they can get more speed on the edges, but he actually slowed up for net. It's not Riverdale High anymore, then. He's finding that out so far early. Third down and 12. LSU was 57% last year on third down, best in the nation. But a lot of those weapons are gone. Jennings throws, and it is broken up inside the 20-yard line. Michael Caputo with excellent coverage on the true freshman, Trey Quinn. A little bit of concern by Dave Aranda, the defensive quarter coordinator of Caputo and his man coverage, but he does an outstanding job of cutting off the route and going up and playing the football. Now, that's why he's a defensive back, because that could have been a pick. True freshman, Trey Quinn. Jamie Keene, not a good punt the last time. We talked to Les Miles last night about his punter. He said occasionally he has a bad one, but then you expect him to kick a 55-yarder the next time. He doesn't want a 55-yarder here, because they're across the 50. Hangs it up very nicely and a fair catch made by Kenzel Doe near the 12-yard line. Here's Reese Davis. That hire of Charlie Strong to Texas. I think he's the right man at the right time at the right job. A terrific job in Louisville. Waited a long time for his first head coaching job. High formation behind Tanner McAvoy. On first and 10 for Wisconsin, the Badgers leading 10 to 7 with two minutes to go in the first quarter. Melvin Gordon. Terrific speed to the outside. He's to the 21-yard line. There is a flag down on the play. Yeah, Arneson, number 49, a tight end. For holding on a little too long. 
holding. Offense, number 49, half the distance to the goal, replay, first down. He's done such a good job all night of blocking. Now watch his hands. His hands are going to get outside. You see how he's covering him, then he jerks the shirt. Anytime a referee or an official sees that jersey move and a good job of Martin Jr., number 26, selling it, automatic flag. Gary Anderson's Badgers back inside the 10-yard line to the 7. McAvoy gave it to Gordon. He's to the 13. We've seen it already, Todd. He can run inside or outside. And he really can. John, I'm so impressed with him. Go, went back this summer and watched tape of all these top running backs. When you look across the country, a lot of good ones. Todd Gurley from Georgia, T.J. Yeldon from Alabama, Mike Davis, South Carolina. But I think the best of the bunch is Melvin Gordon. The competitiveness, the vision, the patience. I think he has exceptional agility and acceleration. And tonight, more than ever before, he's running behind his pads with a lot of le uh, leverage. He thought very seriously about going into the NFL draft after last season. Came back because he thought there was a lot more for his team to accomplish. He got stopped on a nice tackle by Jalen Collins at the 20-yard line, about three yards short of the first down. You know, just to add to Todd's point, is the other thing he can do is make people miss in the hole. A lot of times you're getting that eighth or ninth guy up there in the box, and Melvin Gordon not only has a little power, but he has to shake to make a guy miss. Melvin Gordon says he pays very close attention to the exploits of those other running backs that Todd McShay mentioned. Wants to be the best. Well, he's downplaying the Heisman situation to start the year. There he goes, exploding through the hole for a first down. Ronald Martin and Jalen Mills made the tackle and will likely be the last play of the first quarter. Uh, good job by... Costigan, number 54, pulling around. You know the thing I love, Sean? Todd said he reminds him of J Jamal Charles of Kansas City. I think he's DeMarco Murray, a little bit of that of the Dallas Cowboys. Has that burst and that lean body, but powerful lower body, and he's a competitor. He had a very nice first quarter. Ran for 55 yards. Not eight carries, including nine on the last play of the first quarter. Entertaining first 15 minutes in Houston where Wisconsin leads LSU 10 to 7. Spielman Todd McShay back in Houston, Texas where Wisconsin leads LSU 10 to 7. The Badgers for a long time one of the best running teams in the country. And they had their way on the ground in the first quarter. They rushed for 133 yards. Tanner McAvoy under center. Corey Clement was the running back. McAvoy faked. Had a lot of room to run. Through instead. And it is caught along the far sideline. Nice catch by Alex Erickson. Redshirt sophomore from Darlington, Wisconsin, with Jalen Collins in coverage. Coach Sullivan is saying, throw it, throw it, throw it. Coach Anders saying, run it, run it, run it. <laughs> and he threw it. He threw a dart. And again, building his confidence, the more he shows he can make those throws, the bigger of a dual threat he becomes. Look, he's excited about that. He should be. Clement still the running back, and he is dropped for a loss. Jalen Collins has had a big first half. They are playing without one of their projected starting cornerbacks, Richard Robinson. One game disciplinary suspension. Wisconsin back to the line quickly. And they flip it out to Alex Erickson. One of the Tigers fell down, and that sprung Erickson for a first down into Tiger territory at the 44-yard line, chased out by Deion Jones. Jadavius Wade has one job, turn the ball inside. Again, Arneson, the lead blocker on the edge, springs. Fredrickson. One job, turn it inside. Know where your troops are coming from. Don't be a hero. Do your job. After a 14-yard gain, Clement up the middle and down at the 39-yard line. Five on first down. D.J. Welter and Daniil Hunter made the tackle. 
And again, the Badgers up quickly. LSU's not lined up. And they're scrambling to get men off the field, and they call timeout. LSU takes its first time out of the half. Media. Second and five, Wisconsin, after the LSU timeout. McAvoy lobs one over the head of Melvin Gordon. One of the big reasons Gordon stayed is he felt he could be a much improved pass catcher and pass blocker. In fact, he has just three career catches as a junior. Well, that's on Melvin Gordon because he stopped his route. Right there, McAvoy was looking at him the whole way, and that's where he needs to improve, understanding that if you're out in the pass route, that ball can come your time. You never quit your route, and he quit on that route. We talked to Melvin last night. He said, I can catch it, but they felt James White was a better pass receiver among the running backs. White caught 39 balls last year. Third down five. Could be on the edge of field goal range. McAvoy, again, not on the same page with Reggie Love, and that's a couple of times that Love was heading toward the sideline, and McAvoy threw it toward the end zone. Yeah. In order for that to work, a lot of it's sight adjust. That means the receiver and the quarterback have to see the same coverage, have to see the position of the defender, then the receiver is responsible to run his route off the position of the defender. They're just not clicking. They're not seeing the same thing. Be about a 56 or 57 yard field goal. Gary Anderson selected not to try that. Galeanone, this 51 yard field goal earlier would have been good from that distance. Instead, Meyer punts. Not going to pick up much field position. 23 yard punt by Drew Meyer. Tredavious White made the fair catch. Well, a Sluggish start, Todd, for this LSU offense. Just the one big play for 80 yards and their touchdown. And other than that, just about nothing. Yeah, Sean, we know that they, they want to get their running backs in a rhythm. And it doesn't seem like any of the three so far have been able to get in that rhythm. I think they're going to come out and, and run the football and pound it away and, and try to get these backs, whether it's Leonard Fournette, Terrence McGee, or Kenny Hilliard, into a rhythm running the football. McGee gets the first carry of this possession and reached the 20. For a gain of four. You know, and an alternative plan would be to throw some short passes. Let your young receivers do work out there. Throw them on first down. Throw them off play action. Hit the fullback in the flat. He has good hands. McGee upended by Marcus Trotter. Did some good work last year, mostly as a backup. Of course, they lost the great Chris Borland who had 420 career tackles at linebacker for Wisconsin. He's now a 49er. It's all about making a tackle in the hole, and it's easy to get to that hole when you're unblocked. A missed assignment by that LSU offensive line. He's a good instinctive player, tackle to tackle. So far, that rebuilt front seven of Wisconsin on defense doing a very good job against the terrific offensive line and a veteran line at LSU. They're trying to set up a screen. For Annette, the intended receiver, the LSU folks, and Les Miles thought he was tackled by Vince Beagle. Well, there is no flag on the field, and the Tigers are going to punt. I think the ball was over the head of Fournette when Beagle was able to drag him down. Good job of Beagle coming off. Sean, that play should be run on first down instead of third down. That's something they need to do to try to loosen this defense up a little bit because they're all packed in there. Wow. Jamie Keene, line drive bomb over the head of Kenzel Doe and then out of bounds inside the 20-yard line. The market of the 17. There's a 64-yard punt by the sophomore, 25-year-old from Miners Rest, Australia. These two schools, the honorary captains tonight, J.J. Watt started. Wisconsin is a defensive end, now one of the best defensive players in the NFL right here in Houston in the stadium for the Texans. And Patrick Peterson, Jim Thorpe Award winner, is the best DB in the country. Well, he was at LSU, now the highest paid defensive back in the NFL. Five years, 70 million, the new deal with the Arizona Cardinals. 
And McAvoy on first down. His pass is batted down and then caught by an offensive lineman, Kyle Costigan, the right guard. Might have been better off just batting it to the ground as they lost yardage on the play. He's saying, I'm going to get a once-in-a-lifetime shot at running the ball in college football. I'll go ahead and take my chances. Mm -hmm. Good job of covering up that football. Offensive linemen are taught if they do catch it, understand that the defense is trained to come in and start stripping it because you're not used to handling the pigskin. Costigan, one of the four returning starters on that offensive line. Veteran group, they always have a good offensive line. Rob Havenstein, the star of the group, the right tackle. Melvin Gordon on second and 15. Got a yard, and that's all. Daniel Hunter, the middle linebacker, Kendall Beckwith, made the tackle. Boy, Hunter sure looks the part. John Chavis was talking about that yesterday. I mean, if you were going to draw up what a defensive end should look like, 6'6", 240 pounds, Hunter looks the part. And you love the wingspan. You know, Todd loves that as a NFL draft analyst. Anytime you can get that defensive line with those long arms, scouts drool over that body. Third down and 14. Wisconsin leading by three. Under 11 minutes to go in the half. McAvoy. Spins out of bounds at the 20, seven yards short of the first down. Sedavius White chased him out, and Wisconsin will punt. For a first-time starter in FBS football, he's making good decisions. He's not panicking. He understands I'm not going to force the ball. I'm going to put my punter in a little better position. Outstanding decision by Tanner McAvoy. I think one of the problems we're seeing for Wisconsin, as Meyer comes on to punt again, is still the lack of anybody emerging as a playmaker at the wide receiver position. Rugby-style punt for Meyer. White got away from it, and it takes the terrific bounce for the Badgers. Inside the 30-yard line, Devin Golden downed it to 50-yard punts. Tonight's AFLAC trivia question, we want to know which team was the last to defeat LSU in a non-conference regular season game. We'll give you a little hint. It was a while ago. All right. I got to think about that. One. I think you know the answer, and you always <laughs> like to look like a smarty pants when you see the card at the end of it and blurt out the answer. Anthony Jennings throws a deep ball, and and it is incomplete. Again, the LSU partisans want a flag. Traven Durrell was double covered, the primary coverage from Darius Hillary. I like the call again on first down, but I'm almost thinking to get Jennings into some type of rhythm. Right there was close and incidental contact, but to get Jennings into some type of rhythm, let's do a slant. Let's do a little hitch pass. Let's do something to get him going. Just two for seven. We mentioned he was not sharp in the bowl game against Iowa. He went seven for 19 for just 82 yards in their win over the Hawkeyes. He sacked four times. And now a procedure penalty against the Tigers. Ball start. Offense. Number 74. Five-yard penalty. Second down. We might be seeing Brandon Harris. I mean, there's no rhythm with this offense. Les Miles told us he was going to play. Number two. Ranked quarterback out of ESPN's 300. He might be in the bullpen. The right-hander. There's Brandon Harris. True freshman from Bossier City. They love his talent. This opening game against a tough team. Les Miles said the experience of Jennings in game situations was a big factor in giving him the start. Anthony trying to throw on the run, finally dumped it off to Travis Dixon, and the ball's out. At least the Badgers on their sidelines say it is. They think they have it. They got the scrum going on right now. You see Marcus Trotter, the coach pulled him off. No signal yet, but the Wisconsin bench seems to be convinced they have it now. Recovery by the defense. A 
When you make a good form tackle, good things can happen. If you stay low, if you come in and drive through the football, just like that. Well, that's a fumble. Schobert knocking it out with his shoulder. Wisconsin doing a good job of effort to football. Number seven, Caputo, is the guy that will recover it and win the fight in the scrum underneath. Yeah, I think that's a good call. He wasn't down. The ball's coming out there, as you see, with no part of Dixon on the ground. So it's the first turnover of the game by either team. And Wisconsin begins at the LSU 31. Gordon taken down behind the line of scrimmage. By Jamarie Roscoe. Returning standout on that defensive line for LSU. Todd? Now I just I wonder why they're trying so much to run east and west against this defense. The one advantage LSU has is speed. They can run with anyone in the country. The one advantage Wisconsin has up front is size. I think the more you get Gordon the ball north-south, the more success you'll have on the ground. Well, the one reason for that, Todd, is because they had a little bit of success early, but if you run wide, that tends to open it up inside, so they'll come back to that inside run, like here. Corey Clement slides his way inside the 30 to the 27-yard line. It'll bring up third down and six. Jalen Mills made the tackle. 9.20 to go first half. Wisconsin leading LSU 10 to 7. Wisconsin's a very patient offense. They do things to set things up. That's why you see the outflanking and a run outside to set up different inside things and also to set a bootleg off the play action. Everything is a setup with them. Andy Ludwig, the offensive coordinator, and Gary Anderson are always thinking two to three plays ahead of time. Where can we go? McAvoy, designed option look. That's a play they couldn't have run with Joel Stave. And it's a first down as Clement got inside the 20, picked up eight, and then he got banged down by Daniil Hunter. Well, you're going to see two guys for LSU, one of them being Quan Alexander with. That's what Wisconsin tailbacks can do. They can make guys that are wide open with a clean target on you. They can put you on their highlight film with a little shake. They've been able to do that for years. They rushed for 3,689 yards last year. A school record 6.6 .6 yards per rush for the Badgers a year ago. Gordon comes out wide, perhaps the fly sweep again. McAvoy, a screen the other way, and it's caught in the flat by Sam Arneson and a good tackle in space by Duke Riley. Or Arneson had more work he could have done. He's down at the 15-yard line, a pickup of four. It's a good job of surveying the field by Tanner McAvoy. You remember the play earlier when Melvin Gordon stopped his route? He was wide open. They come back to that. But he saw it was covered that time, and understanding the offense, come to his number two option or third option, and Sam Arneson. And McAvoy went under center. Big hole for Melvin Gordon and a touchdown. Virtually untouched. From 14 yards out. Follow 34. Derek Watt with the kick out block. And we talk, talked about it was the burst in the power of Melvin Gordon. Derek Watt's going to get the kick out. Number 34 right there. Then you see what Todd was talking about, the ability to finish runs. And when he gets an open seam, he has afterburners and the ability to finish with some authority. Derek Watt is the younger brother of J.J. Watt, the great star of the Houston Texans. He's really become the face of their franchise. Here to root on his brother and his alma mater. There's two brothers actually on this team, T.J. Watt as well. Golly, a number trivia question. What team was the last to win a non-conference regular season game against LSU? You want to guess? I'll see if I can keep my streak alive. I'm going to say Virginia Tech. Well, you did, because it was already on the screen. I wasn't looking at the screen. Back in 2002, <laughs> Nick Saban was the coach. The game was in Blacksburg. Since then, LSU has won 45 consecutive regular season non-conference games. That is the longest such streak in FBS history. It's in jeopardy tonight. They're down by 10 midway through the second quarter. Leonard Fournette. He delivered a blow to a would-be tackler as he brought it back to the 29. The kicker, Andrew Endicott, made the stop. Here's Reese Davis.
Sean, this update is brought to you by the city of Houston. What's going on in the city of Arlington is number one's in trouble. J.W. Walsh of Oklahoma State to David Gwynn. He goes 55 yards, and the Pokes are just down by three on ABC to Florida State. Defending national champs, you think they're clearly the number one team starting out this year? I do, but I think it's awful, awful difficult to defend. So many good teams this year. A lot of parity. Anthony Jennings, play action fake. Good catch out of the flat by Trey Quinn. First catch of his collegiate career for the freshman from Lake Charles. Well, that's the call, Sean, right there. See that? Nice, easy pass. Not a lot of reads. Just get him the ball. Get into a rhythm with your quarterback. And, you know, you made the point, too. If you got a running back that's getting in rhythm, Feed him. Let him go. I mean, I know you want to play everybody, but this isn't Little League. You don't have to play everybody. If you get a guy, get him going. <laughs> Quinn, by the way, 357 catches in his high school career, the Louisiana State record. Jennings, another play fake. And a, another open receiver, and it's dropped at the 43 of Wisconsin by Deshaun Smith, one of their 17,000 tight ends on their <laughs> roster for Les Miles. It's okay. It's a good throw, and it's a good call. Because you're starting to create seams. Because what happens if you if you run the ball on first down all the time, everybody sneaks up. So that's a good read and a good call. And at least you take the positive out of that we have it. If we want it, we can come back to it. Because you make the defense then adjust. You're going to understand why Smith would drop the ball. He was a high school teammate of Trey Quinn. And if Trey Quinn caught 357 passes, yeah, I yeah. doubt there was much for anybody else. Terrence McGee to the 42-yard line. Vince Beagle made the tackle. Well, so far, so good for that remade Wisconsin defense. LSU has only 133 yards of offense, and 80 of those were on that one play when they had a busted coverage in the secondary. And LSU scored on an 80-yard touchdown pass to Traven Durrell. Doing a good job of matching sub package for sub package when LSU substitutes Wisconsin's able to get their pass rushers in. Four man rush and still they flush Jennings out of the pocket. Throws way over the intended receiver, Traven Durrell. Well, they want to play power football, but right now 25 yards rushing for LSU in the middle of the second quarter. That's a shock to me. Mm -hmm. And they'll make adjustments. I mean, they are who they are. They'll go in, and they're a well-coached football team. And they got to come out ready to play. I mean, they might have been too hyped for this. Jamie Keene, line drive punt. Kenzel Doe, fair catch. And Wisconsin will begin from its own 14-yard line, the 14th-ranked team in the country. Has the lead. They were a five and a half point underdog according to this morning's paper here in Houston. Let's take a look at tonight's Royal Purple focus on performance. Well, Melvin Gordon's great, but let's get a little love to the Wisconsin offensive line. You have Bolts and Llewellyn working in tandem. Nobody's better in the country than double teaming the nose and reaching to the second level, which creates seams in space and also it also helps when you have an old school fullback like Derek Watt able to throw the kick out block and of course the finisher with Melvin. Tanner McAvoy under center on first and 10 for the Badgers leading by 10 under six minutes to go in the first half. Corey Clement picked his way out to the 18 yard line a gain of four to Neil Hunter the stop for LSU. Another example of making a guy miss in the hole. Already 177 yards rushing for Wisconsin against the defense that allowed only 143 a game last year. Melvin Gordon with his running mate last year, James White, combined a rush for 3,053 yards, the FBS record for a pair of teammates in a single season. Gordon and Clement hope to break that record this year. Clement. That pinballed around for no gain. And it'll be third down and six. D.J. Welter, the primary hit for LSU. Not a bad time because it's a distance where you can pick up 
the first down with your feet as a quarterback and to get him in space. So eliminate his read so he does not have to survey the field and have him with a run pass option off of some type of bootleg. Not a bad time for it. McAvoy, quick pass, and it's incomplete. Alex Erickson, the intended receiver, he got up barking as if he wanted a flag against Tredavious White, but the officials have let them play tonight. It's a little bit behind, mm -hmm. but one he could catch. I think as a, you know, as a college football receiver, you get two hands on the ball, that's, you got to bring that in. Tough catch, but one that he's capable of making. White goes back for the punt from Drew Meyer. Good kick. Taken in at the 33. And he's taken down at the 39 by Joe Schobert. Starting linebacker out there covering the punt. 49-yard kick, 6-yard return. Tomorrow on ESPN, more coverage of the FIBA Basketball World Cup. Team USA takes the court against Turkey in a preliminary round game. USA versus Turkey tomorrow at 3.30 on ESPN. Also available, of course, on Watch ESPN. They struggled well, with Finland, didn't they, today? Mm, no, won by about 50. <laughs> last time. And here's Brandon Harris. You hear the LSU fans cheering. Here comes the freshman. Now, don't know if this is because they think Jennings is struggling or just by design because the LSU coaches told us last night that Harris would get in the game. And certainly, Les Miles' team could use a spark. And they turn to the very highly touted and highly recruited freshman Harris. And it's a reverse. Trey Quinn. Well defended by Wisconsin. Michael Caputo held his ground. And it's only a two-yard game. It's a good call against non-disciplined defense. Unfortunately, you're playing against a very disciplined defense. They will not get out of position. That was something that Coach Miles was talking to us last night about. They're always in position. They know what to do, and they don't try to be heroes. They try to play their role, and they do it exceptionally well. Well, Harris is a true freshman, but he graduated from high school early and arrived at LSU in the spring semester. They got indoctrinated into the football and the classroom. He kept the ball and got dropped for a loss. Alec James. Oh, the thing, defensive lineman. The thing, guys, with, with Harris is his ceiling is a lot higher than Jennings. He can throw the ball down the field, absolutely drive it with velocity. He's a good athlete. But the base, the basement, if you will, is a little bit lower than that of Jennings. They obviously went with Jennings because he's going to protect the football better. He knows the offense. And with Harris, you know, he didn't even take snaps from under center. So there's some concern with that. But he can make some big plays because of that strong arm and the mobility. But as you see here, as he calls a timeout, just a lot of confusion for a young mm -hmm. quarterback. Well, it took him a while, it seemed, to get the play into him. Then looked like he was struggling with a wristband to get the play communicated. So a timeout LSU leaving the Tigers with one with under three minutes to go in the half. Down on third down and nine, he's sacked by Joe Schobert back at the 29-yard line. Well, here's what Coach Aranda was hoping, hoping for, excuse me, movement beating power. You have a 290-pound tight end trying to block a 240-pound linebacker on movement. Ooh. Just too quick inside. Brandon Harris does not have a chance. Yeah, that was a whiff. So Keene punts again. Kenzel Doe in trouble. And swarmed under back at the 12-yard line. Well covered with Duke Riley leading the charge. For During the kick, personal foul, face mask, kicking team number 50. 15-yard penalty will be added to the end of the run. First down. Reed Ferguson, the snapper, called for the penalty. Jameis looked athletic there. Mm -hmm. well, that's a big penalty. Brings the ball out to the 29-yard line. Much better starting 
field position for Wisconsin. Even though they're a running team, they are a big play running team. Doe went flying in motion. Gordon. Wow. That was quite a seven-yard run. Yeah. Deion Jones made the tackle. Well, Todd talked about the speed of LSU's defense. Well, we talked earlier that Melvin Gordon has the speed to match that. And how about an assist to Tanner McAvoy getting a man down on the ground and not quitting on the play? I think players respond to that. They'll be watching film. They'll be high five with Tanner. And that makes them want to play harder for Tanner. Now to a minute 50 in the half. All three timeouts left for Wisconsin as they try to build on a 10-point lead. McAvoy play fake wants a deep ball. And it's overthrown over the head of George Rushing, a true freshman who had a terrific training camp. And the coaches really believe that he could very early in the season emerge as the star of the wide receiver group. And they need one. They had really only one wide receiver threat last year, Jared Aberderis, who caught a school record 78 passes. The next highest wide receiver was 10 catches. Yeah. And Aberderis is in the NFL now. Oh, with the Packers. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately. Blew out his knee, unfortunately. Yeah. Yeah. Gary Anderson and Andy Ludwig said last night, we cannot just drop pass plays designed for one guy. McAvoy kept it and got flattened well short of the first down. Jamari Roscoe, the tackle at the 36. Les Miles out of the field to call his last timeout of the half. It was a good job by Roscoe. Not getting too far upfield, able to change directions and down the line to secure the tackle. Last time out of the half for LSU, 126 to go. They want the ball back. They want to find some offense. They have that 80-yard touchdown play for their only score of the half so far. The other 25 plays from scrimmage, Chris, just 44 yards of offense. And nothing going, nothing through the air, nothing on the ground. And right now, they're having a hard time handling the movement of the Badger defense. The speed is beating the size. So to me, I think it depends on field position. Knowing Les Miles, if he gets any type of field position, he's going to let his young quarterback go and try to go down and get some type of, of score. They need to. They need to get some momentum into the half. Well, this is the first year of the college football playoff, so every game is important for teams to think they have a chance and these are two teams that do think they have a chance particularly Wisconsin I heard of some of our analysts today say this is a must-win game for Wisconsin because you lose this one they don't play a very tough schedule in the Big Ten they might be able to run the Big Ten schedule because they don't play Ohio State that's a loss for LSU Hunter going to the locker room but yes. perhaps they won't play any more defense in this half they don't play Ohio State Michigan, Michigan State, or Penn State this year, Wisconsin. <laughs> it's the luck of the draw. Mm. Rugby punt for Meyer. Whoa, risky play by Davius White. I mean, why just pounce on it? You can't run it back, and it was just about to stop. All you do is risk a problem doing that. Here's Reese Davis. Eight yards for Georgia and had 100 yards in kickoff returns. Had four touchdowns. Anthony Jennings is back in, so it was one brief series and out for the freshman, Brandon Harris. No timeouts. We'll see how aggressively Les Miles and Cam Cameron decide to play it. A little safe middle screen to Kenny Hilliard. And he's tackled from behind by Alex James. The LSU coaches, particularly Cameron, marveling at Wisconsin's ability to strip and force fumbles in place just like that one and it looked like the LSU ball carriers are ready for it tonight. 12 yard gain. Jennings, running room. Now throws a deep ball into single coverage and this time they will throw a flag as Durrell hit the deck as he got tangled up with Devin Golden. A little bit undisciplined by Golden. He's in good position. You got to trust your training to make the play. You don't need to grab and hold. Sometimes if a guy's running a little bit away from you, you hit the panic button and you start to grab. He was in good position. Just trust it. 
pass interference. Defense, number four. 15 yard penalty from the previous spot. Automatic, first down. Well, they showed the replay on the big screen here, and the Badger fans don't like it. 15 yards from the line of scrimmage in college football, so the ball goes to the 42 of Wisconsin with 56 seconds to go. Galden, their third corner, so he'll play a lot. And there were a couple of the times they thought his career was over. He's battled back from some very serious knee injuries, missed all of last season. 2012, he played in only four games due to a torn ACL. Coaches love his attitude. They're happy he can still play. Jennings trying to spin away from the rush. They brought Shelton off the corner, a corner back. He put the pressure on Jennings, and eventually it resulted in a throwaway. The beauty of that defense is you can bring speed off the edge with the corner, but they have the ability because they can drop linebackers out of a 3-4 to play a three-deep zone so nothing goes over their head. He's a good player. He's getting better and better. Started as a true freshman last year. Best cover guy the Badgers have. He had four interceptions last year as a freshman, the most ever by a Wisconsin true freshman. 48 seconds to go in the half. Probably not in the part of the field where they try a field goal. Jennings to the near sideline. Out of bounds over the head of Trey Quinn with Michael Caputo covering. Third down and 10, 41 seconds to go and no timeouts for LSU. One thing I like to see is they, they raved a little bit about their tight ends last night. They have to get them involved, not on the outside, but inside the middle of the field. Work those linebackers. Run rub routes, read routes off of them. Oh, for four on third and eight plus. This is third and ten. Badgers crowded the line. They rushed four. Jennings deep down the middle looking for one of those tight ends, and it's broken up. Looking for Travis Dixon, and it was covered beautifully by Derek Landish. The coaches think he is poised to have a terrific senior year. Well, he's having a pretty good game tonight. Good discipline right there. When the hands go up, watch his hands go right through with the punch. Right there, you see that? That's well coached. Did not panic, did not grab, waited for the receiver's hands to go up, and he comes up with a double punch through. LSU trying to figure out what it's going to do here, and they're taking a lot of time as the play clock runs. They don't have a timeout to stop it. They're going to take a five-yard penalty here, and then punt, you would think. It would have been almost play a 60-yard field goal try. Kicking team, five-yard penalty, fourth down. Absolutely the right decision. They have not completed maybe one downfield pass the whole night. Fourth and ten. You got to punt and go in and regroup. And that man can regroup a team. That's Miles. We've been regrouping all offseason after losing Zach Mettenberger, the quarterback of the NFL. The true great wide receivers, Jarvis Landry, Odell Beckham Jr., and the running back, Jeremy Hill. Beckham, Landry, and Hill all drafted in the first two rounds. Bettenberger, due to injury, went later in the draft. He has great arm talent. Seventh punt of the half for Jamie Keene. And they down it at the eight. Down by Jamal Adams, a very talented freshman safety. They think will get a lot of playing time as the year goes along. They're missing five players. Did not make the trip. Malachi Dupree injured a hamstring in practice. And then the other four all suspended for one game for disciplinary reasons. The only one who would have started tonight was Robinson. Porter was the starting center last year but lost the job to Ethan Posick. Feast and Bain backups on the defense. That's not the reason why they're losing. But they would have liked to have had those gentlemen, certainly. McAvoy takes a knee. He didn't put up big numbers, but he didn't need to. That offensive line helping to lead the way for Melvin Gordon in particular, who rushed for 85 yards and a touchdown in the half. They took advantage of an LSU turnover to score on a short field. Here's Todd. Coach, what has to happen to get the run game untracked? We, we, we have the plays. We're, we're good with that. We, we had some young guys make some mistakes. 
know, if we get that settled, if we settle down and play well, we'll be just where we need to be in this. How would you assess the play of your defense? Well, it's been spotty a little bit. I mean, but they've been out there the whole half. The, the thing is, is offensively, we've got to keep the ball. You know, we, we need to have a nice long drive and get seven and, you know, get, change the disposition of that defense. We, we can't give up the rushing yards we've given up so far. Thanks, Coach. Chris, Sean. All right, Todd, thank you. And Coach is right, almost a five-minute edge in time of possession for Wisconsin. That's what happens when you run the ball as effectively as the Badgers do. They run for 182 yards in the first half. Halftime of the Advocare Texas kickoff. The Badgers 17, the Tigers 7. Now Reese Mark and Lou with the BM. This is Dick Sporting Goods kickoff week. Welcome back to ESPN College Football Primetime, presented by Hampton Hotels. It's the 2014 AdvoCare Texas kickoff from NRG Stadium in Houston, Texas. Sold out more than 71,000 on hand, most of them cheering for LSU. And they had little to cheer in the first half. Wisconsin leads at the half by 10. LSU, Chris Spielman, in that first half had nine possessions. They had the one 80-yard touchdown pass for their only score, punted seven times, lost a fumble, only six first downs, only 16 yards rushing. Yeah, Coach Miles hit it right on the head. They have to have their offense eat up some clock and put some drives together to get their defense off the field. And on defense, they got to stop the run, Sean. And Wisconsin's doing a good job about flanking him. But when LSU has had the on-block player in the hole or in the, in the box, he's been able not to make the tackle, both Clement and Gordon have been able to make that on block player miss, and that's why Wisconsin has 184 yards in the first half on the ground. And they will receive the second half kickoff, will the Badgers. Here's Cameron Gamble, the freshman to kick off for the first time. True freshman from Flower Mound, Texas. Les Miles was raving about his leg. He said in 10 years in their indoor facility, Gamble is the only one in practice who's ever hit the ceiling of that building while kicking off. Biggest thigh pads I've ever seen on a kicker. Delay a game, kicking team, five yard penalty. Wow. When do you ever see that? <laughs> Delay a game on the opening kickoff of the second half. Well, maybe you just want a little extra room to kick it out of the back <laughs> of the end zone, show off a little bit. That's unbelievable. Kenzo Doe. Main return guy did take one back against South Carolina last year in the bowl game. Very dangerous. Number three. And LSU had problems covering kickoffs last year. TCU ran one back in the opening game a year ago for a touchdown. Wow. Oh, look at that. Even with the five-yard penalty, he sends it about six or seven yards deep in the end zone. Here's Todd McShay. Hey, Sean, you know, the thing that jumped out in the first half was really the rushing attack for Wisconsin, how they were able to dominate the line of scrimmage. And Melvin Gordon, of course, a big story in the first half, averaging almost seven yards per carry following that big offensive front. You're going to see here the vision, the patience, and then when he does go, he gets behind his pads, the leverage that he brings. Inside run, bouncing it to the outside. We talked all game long about the acceleration. And then finally, Getting behind the pads again and then going in for the score. Melvin Gordon has done a great job behind an offensive line that has dominated the line of scrimmage against LSU. He's off his average, though, Todd, for his career entering tonight. 8.1 yards per carry, best among all active players. Six and a half tonight. Oh, he's going to improve on that average. Only one man can catch him, and it's Jalen Collins who will. Well, again, it's the offensive line and being able to get to the second level. You're going to see what I'm talking about. Watch Volts again, the center being able to get up to the second level. Look at him. They double the block, then they get to the second level, then he finds the seams, and Sean, there's nobody that can start and stop faster than Melvin Gordon in all of college football. And a fly sweep action that's been so good for Wisconsin these last couple of years. 
definitely impacted the movement of the defense. You saw them going to the left, their right, our left, as we looked at the replay from behind the offense. Everything's a setup. Everything's a setup. 63 yard gain. Corey Clement in. He drags DJ Welter inside the 10. We mentioned it in the first half, Chris. They're a running team, but they're a big play running team. Last year, Wisconsin led the nation in runs of 30 yards or more. They had 23 of them. They had 14 runs of 40 plus, 9 of 50 plus, 7 of 60 plus, 6 of 70 plus. Two of 80 or more, and one run of over 90. They can score quickly on the ground. Tanner McAvoy throws incomplete in the flat, looking for Derek Watt. It'll be third down and seven. You know, you mentioned the crazy thing about this is that every team that plays the Badgers understands what they try to do, and they all load up to stop them but rarely has somebody stopped them. Well, that's what John Chavis said last night, the LSU defensive coordinator said, you know, they have an unproven quarterback. They have no wide receivers back with any kind of track record. Can you load the box even more? He said, people load the box against them as much as you can, and they still run. Yep. Amazing. Big third down here. LSU trying to force a field goal attempt. McAvoy got away from the rush. McAvoy very close to the first down. Looks like they're going to mark him short. He got to the yellow line, but perhaps bounced there, and they're going to mark him down to the three, about a half yard shy of the first down. Watch the move he puts on Tredavious White. Outstanding athlete corner, gives him, uh, gives him a shake and takes it away. And Sean, at 6'6", when you're that kind of athlete and that mobility, what a weapon that is to have for the Badgers. I like the decision by Gary Anderson here. The game going his way. Ride that huge offensive line. They're going for the first down. Watt the fullback. Clement the tailback. Clement surges inside the two for a first down. Surge is the correct word. The surge of the offensive line. Pushing back the Tiger defenders up front. Their pads are lower than LSU's pads. Right there, Havenstein at six foot eight has leverage on number 91, Lockature. And you want to run over your All-American, your big tackle? That's the guy to run over. Boys to take a three-score lead, Wisconsin. Clement, touchdown! Two-yard touchdown run for the sophomore from Glassboro, New Jersey. His running made Melvin Gordon a student of the top rushers, a la Todd McShay, around the country. He says Corey Clement should be on the list of the best backs in the country. Best thing about that tandem is because they know each other so good, they push each other. So anytime they get in the ball game, they produce. Well, when you start... With a delay of game penalty on the second half kickoff, it doesn't seem like you came out of the locker room ready to play. That's what the Tigers did. Replay officials just confirming it was a touchdown. Rafael Valianoni from Brazil that came to this country to Chattanooga, Tennessee as an exchange student. He wanted to get a college soccer scholarship, wound up kicking footballs for the first time in his life. And is now a freshman kicker for number 14, Wisconsin. Now leading by 17 over LSU. Melvin Gordon up to 148 yards rushing. Then his running mate, Clement, finished the job. Andrew Endicott kicks off for Wisconsin. That touchdown by Clement a moment ago has really quieted this pro LSU crowd. Endicott has it come tumbling down to Leonard Fournette. Best return of the night for the freshman. 
He's had only two carries from scrimmage for seven yards. Let's see if they get him more involved. Joe Ferguson made the tackle for the Badgers, who played excellent defense tonight, Chris. Yeah, and here's what you see with Wisconsin. Is Sean, they're doing movement. They're moving guys in the gaps, lining them up at different positions, hitting different gaps, which creates confusion on the offensive line. And it also allows players to run free. Watch 45 Heron. Take that little pinch move. Not an offensive lineman does not adjust to come off to get Trotter. He's free in the hole to make a play. Anthony Jennings, the quarterback. <laughs> Kenny Hilliard, the ball carrier. And he's ahead to the 41-yard line. Michael Caputo made the tackle. Some of the numbers we mentioned, we came back at halftime. The one 80-yard touchdown pass from Jennings to Traven Doral. Other than that, nothing. Seven punts and a lost fumble in the other eight possessions. They've had only one possession tonight that lasted more than four plays. Hilliard remains the tailback with Connor Neighbors, the fullback. Michael Caputo leg tackles him. Short of the first down by about three yards and a long way to go. Now this is a critical stage of the game right now for LSU. <laughs> you read my mind. We've been working together for a long time. The reason being this offense isn't built to come back. And they're not built to work in a hurry. And so they need to get something going here, at least some type of field position, so their defense can have a chance to put them in a shorter field to try to score. But they have to get something relatively soon. The longest regular season winning streak in non-conference games in the history of FBS football is in serious jeopardy now as Hillier didn't even reach the line of scrimmage. Well, the leader of the defense, some say the best player on the defense, Michael Caputo, coming up, on block player. Watch him, he comes in, he makes the play, gets enough to get the ankle. The reason why he's on block is because everybody on that Badger defense understands their role and they execute the role. They bounce the ball to him, and he's there to clean up and make a good open field tackle. Jamie Keene must be getting leg weary as he's on to punt again for the eighth time. Kenzel Doe back deep. Well, less miles known to reach into the bag of tricks, and here it comes. You thought it might be time for something. It's the fake punt. Kendall Beckwith took the short snap and carried four yards for the first down. Bradley Dale Pivato, the special teams coach, back on their staff. I think Wisconsin might have been a bit more ready for that, given the circumstances, the field position, the short yardage to gain for the first down, and Les Miles' history. It was a pretty high percentage of a fake. Yeah, that's a good call on your part, Sean. You called that before it happened. Wisconsin was ready. They just, uh, LSU executed, blocked it well. Much needed first down for the Tigers. Jennings throws deep, and it is caught. Another long ball to Traven Durrell, and he's inside the 10-yard line. Beat the excellent corner, Darius Hillary. Shot. Not, not bad coverage. In fact, it's pretty good coverage, but the ball is so well thrown that Doral does not have to break stride, and he drops it right into the bucket. They go quickly to the line after a 44-yard gain. The toss to Leonard Fournette, and he's down to the four-yard line. That big punt successfully executed has brought the crowd back to life. Two big plays of the night. Both have gone to Doral for LSU. The 80-yard touchdown, now the 44-yard gainer. I like the tempo. Yep, trying to go quickly. Keep the momentum. At that time, Fournette got dumped by Michael Caputo. That's, that's a heck of a tackle. One-on-one -on -one against a very big, fast man. Caputo was able to get him down. Took a little brunt of punishment, but he was able to secure the legs because he wrapped his arms. Executing fundamentals under pressure. I love it. He's a redshirt junior from Western Pennsylvania. They were going to try to beef him up and make him a linebacker, but they needed him at safety. And that's a good move the way he's played tonight to leave him there. Third down and goal. Jennings. Taken down for a loss. Back at the seven. Marcus Trotter made the first hit, and then he had some help. And a couple things here. Darius Hillary, got to have a short memory. 
They're going to go back to Durrell. See that? But Hillary's got him covered, forcing Jennings to pull it down. And again, open field tackle with a wrap of the arms on Marcus Trotter. Chikwe Obashi, redshirt freshman who they think has a bright future, helped Trotter finish him off. Loss of three. So do you follow up the fake punt with a fake field goal? With less? Probably. <laughs> with less. <But> man, <laughs> I think the chances are greater than him kicking it. I think they need points, though. they yep. got to get points to make it a two-possession game. Colby Delahousie missed only one field goal try out of 14 last year. And there's a flag down. Delay a game. Kicking team. Five-yard penalty. Fourth down. They'll have to do it again. He made it. But they didn't snap it in time. Ooh. That, that. Sometimes that comes back to haunt you, and a lot of times that's a uh, miscommunication between Craig Thorpe, number 16, the holder, and the long snapper, number 50. Reed Ferguson. So Delahousie now will try from 30 yards. The only field goal he missed last year was against Furman. He pulled the groin in the warm-up and tried to kick his way through it. That one is dead center. Now the walk-on who grew up dreaming of being an LSU Tiger. It's a fast-moving quarter, almost midway through the third now, and a two-touchdown lead for Bucky. Back with our wonderful production and technical crews for another season of college football. Top 15 battle, Wisconsin leading now by 14 after an LSU field goal. Cameron Gamble's kickoff much shorter this time. Kenzel Doe got popped at the 30, but a good return. Jalen Collins and Dwayne Thomas combined now Kenny football he was tremendous Tanner McAvoy going deep single coverage battle for the ball and it's incomplete broken up by Jalen Mills again they're trying to get it to the freshman George rushing good job by Jalen Mills to stay in discipline not getting sucked up into play action doing his responsibility and wow. gets away with a hold now, in the NFL this year, there'll be 17,000 flags on the field for that. Mm -hmm. and there's an emphasis, not in college football, obviously. You shouldn't, you shouldn't miss that. Quite frankly, Sean, you see that jersey move? You shouldn't be missing that. McAvoy just 5 out of 15 for 33 yards. But they're leading LSU by two touchdowns. Clement bopped down for a loss by Quan Alexander. Weak side linebacker, a little split timer that position this year with Deion Jones. Good job, and John Chavis is dialing up run blitzes. It's the only way he can stop them. They can't stop him in base, so you come up with a run blitz. Good movement with a dip and rip by Quan Alexander. LSU fans trying to get back into it. The field goal got the Tigers within two scores. Now the defense trying to force a three and out. McAvoy out of bounds about five yards short of the marker Daniil Hunter chased him out so a three and out for Wisconsin with 635 to go in the third quarter a big series for the Bayou Bengals right there getting off the field and three downs giving your offense a chance to get back into it exactly what Les Miles wanted to do going into the half Davius White back for the punt from Drew Meyer Sixth punt of the night for the junior. Short and wobbly and out of bounds. Close to the 40-yard line. Right on the 40-yard line, apparently. Just a 25-yard kick. My tribe. On first down for LSU. Leonard Fournette. The freshman carries for about five. Here's Todd McShay. Hey, Sean, it's been interesting. The last two times I've been over the LSU sideline, Jeff Grimes, the 
offensive line coach sitting with all these offensive linemen they're going through what Wisconsin is doing to them pre snap they're shifting and then right before the snap they're shifting and moving again not a ton of confusion just trying to figure out what exactly Wisconsin's doing so they can get their assignment assignments right in the run game on second and five Jennings keeps weaves through the defense and has a first down into Wisconsin territory at the 47 yard line Derek Landish made the tackle and the coaching might be paying off because now they got a little bit of movement up front and giving Jennings space to work and move in the first play to Fournette they created some movement pushing back that Badger defense two things the shifting the movement before the snaps problems with LSU's offensive line and movements during the snap has caused problems with the LSU offensive line. Now, if they get it in control, they can establish something on the ground. Jennings goes into the gun. He's just six out of 16 passing. McGee got belted at the line of scrimmage by Marcus Trotter. Coaches said this would be his kind of game. He's not necessarily great in space, but he's great between the tackles. Well, right here, Herring's going to set him up. Herring's going to eat, too. Number 45 is going to eat two. See me two right there. 77. Posick does not come off. That's that's what Wisconsin can do. They come off on those double teams. LSU was yet to do that. It might be because he's a first year starter. Posick. Sophomore center from Lamont, Illinois. Back to the I formation. Leonard Fournette. Finding the running a little bit tougher than he did in high school. Rushed for almost 8,000 yards in four years at St. Augustine. Joe Ferguson made the tackle. He's the son of Barry Alvarez, the legendary Wisconsin football coach, and now their athletic director. Grandson. Yeah. What did I say? Son. Oh, grandson. Yeah. Sorry. Namesake, Joe Ferguson, quarterback of the Bills. Here we go. Third down and seven. Under four minutes to go in the third quarter. Jennings throws, caught, and first down. John DeArce managed to escape from a tackle that would have been very close to the first down marker. He's to the 33. That was a great job by DeArce, moving his feet as he was catching the ball, anticipating that he was going to make the catch and having to get some space after and create that extra yardage. He, this guy looks like a senior wide receiver. Obviously, just a young uh, red shirt freshman at this point. His first career catch. Jennings runs after the 12 yard completion to DRs. Marcus Trotter made the tackle. So the momentum has shifted to the side of LSU, it seems. And it really started with that fake punt that resulted in the first down. The other thing, Sean, is they're going a little bit up tempo, which seems to help them get in better rhythm. Jennings keeps it. I don't know if he went down intentionally or just kind of stumbled as he neared the line of scrimmage, but a minimal gain. They'll mark him right on the 30-yard line, third down and seven. Yeah, well, that's the second tackle the 33-yard line has made tonight. You see it right there. His foot got caught. Stumbled down. Landish was there, but Jennings is a good enough athlete to make you miss in the hole. Designed quarterback run. Jennings has the ability to be a dual threat as a runner and passer. Rushed up the middle. They had a good call, it seemed, to screen, but they couldn't execute it to Fournette. And on fourth down and seven, Les Miles has a decision to make. I think so far the offense yeah. is still standing on the field. Now here comes the field goal unit. Sean, I think Fournette was expecting a change up, and Jennings got a little excited and threw him the fastball, low and away. And it's tough to catch that one off the screen coming at you 100 miles per hour. So here's Colby Delahousie. Trying a 47 yarder. He's one for one tonight, hit just a couple of moments ago from 30 yards. He's a terrific kicker. But it's still a two score game as the Wisconsin defense held, forced the field goal try that made it an 11 point game. 
Wisconsin leads now 24 to 13. They led moments ago 24 to 7. Dick Sporting Goods kickoff week. The Advocare Texas kickoff. Second year of this game, Oklahoma State beat Mississippi State here last year. Denzel Doe back for the kickoff from Cameron Gamble. Another good kick by the freshman. Grantham from Georgia moving to Louisville. Had a little, little uh, friction between those two early on in training well, camp. There were reports of that that have been denied, but yeah. when Bobby Petrino is on the scene. Friction <laughs> seems to be a part of it. No doubt he's a brilliant offensive mire. That's a very controversial choice. Quan Alexander swings down Melvin Gordon. And Chris, can Wisconsin be successful? I mean, last year they had a passing game that went with the running game. As a matter of fact, they attempted more passes in the season and they didn't any other season in school history, but they're getting nothing out of the passing game tonight. Zero, and it's, it's not on McAvoy. It's on their receivers cannot create any separation. That's the only way they're going to have true success as they progress through the season. Last year, Aberderis was their only wide receiver threat, and right now it looks like they don't have any. Reggie Love got belted by Tredavious White. Man, Love a player that doesn't give him one for one. He gets chopped to his feet so quick off the ground and making an open field tackle. Earlier in the ball game, he lost contain. This time, he kept his responsibility, and the ball carrier bounced right to him because of the pursuit coming from inside out. Excellent. LSU crowd trying to get back into it now. The players on the sideline imploring them to make noise. They've really been out of the game since that touchdown early in this quarter by... Wisconsin McAvoy on third and eight throws caught short of the first down Jordan Frederick banged out of bounds by Dwayne Thomas good hit by the backup sophomore safety from New Orleans excellent closing speed Frederick looked like he had the corner but you saw the speed of Thomas come in there to getting short of the first that's what they're built on they can play man so now it's Meyer who might be tiring as he's about to kick it away for the seventh time tonight. For Davius White standing back at his own 20-yard line. Another lousy kick. He has a case of the short shanks to the left. He's limping off the field. He's hurt or injured. But he's not kicking the ball. Two in a row, creating field position. Self-inflicted wounds by the punter, Meyer. Now the medical staff's going to check on him. They mark it at the 41, 26-yard punt. He's had punts of 25, 23, and 26. Let's see if Cam Cameron comes back to the tempo. That seems to work. It got him in a little bit of rhythm. Got Jennings in the rhythm. McAvoy on the phone to the coaches as they try to find some offense. 79 yards of offense in this quarter for Wisconsin. Fournette carries on what might be the last play of the third quarter. He gained four to the 45-yard line. And there's another injured defensive line. Oh, no, it's Warren Herring. Already lost Conrad Zagzebski early in the game. A uh, starting defensive lineman, and now Herring really expected to be the standout of that front three. He's been outstanding tonight, and you do not like to see where they're going to check is that, that knee. He's been outstanding though, all over the field, playing a lot of plays. They don't have the luxury like the LSU to substitute nine guys in there. He's been outstanding and a good football player. Again, thin at that position. See. On the right side of the picture here. Yeah. Right here. His own man inadvertently rolls up on the back of his right leg. Boy, and sometimes that foot gets caught in the turf. I hope he's okay. He's a good football player, Sean's waited a long time to be a starter on this football team, has taken advantage of it. As a fifth year senior. 
By the way, we have been inquiring for more updates on the status of Conrad Zagzebski, and at this point, Wisconsin has not released any more information. If they do, when they do, we will certainly pass it along. Well, that's where a lot of offensive line and defensive line are vulnerable to injuries on those double teams and bodies are flying and you're you're planted in that ground and you can see the frustration as he pounds the table. It might be his ankle. He can't go. They're without two thirds of their starting front three on that rebuilt defensive line. Well, it feels like momentum's on the side of LSU, but Wisconsin still outscored them seven to six in the third quarter and Gary Anderson's team leads by 11. Advocare, Texas kickoff. LSU considered about a five and a half point favorite starting the game. They have never led in the game. Wisconsin leads 24 to 13 as we begin the fourth quarter. Sean McDonough, Chris Spielman, and Todd McShay. LSU has won 45 straight regular season non conference games. The all time record at the highest level of college football. It's in danger tonight. Anthony Jennings keeps on second and six. He got four. Derek Landish bumped him out. The War Warren Herring, the nose tackle who was just taken out of the game, he's going to be out for the rest of the night. It's a right knee injury. They've got him on the table right now, and they're icing it. And there was concern that Drew Meyer, the starting punter, was going to be out for the rest of the night. P.J. Rozowski, the freshman, was warming up. But Drew Meyer just came out of the locker room, and he's going to be punting for the rest of the night. It seems like the injury is not that big of a deal. Big play here in the opening seconds of the fourth quarter. Third and two. They're two for 12 on third down after they led the nation last year. 57% on third down. Kenny Hilliard carries for a first down for LSU into Wisconsin territory at the 48. Well, that's something I'm expecting to see from an LSU offensive line. When you need two yards, everybody knows you're going to run, and they were able to create movement against that Badger front seven. Now the Badgers are playing with two backup defense linemen, so now's the time to take advantage if you want to, of running the football. Hilliard continues. And it looked like they tried to throw a pop pass, and he got popped. Jennings did for a loss. Jake Keeper, the backup who's in there with the injuries to Zagzebski and Herring, made a big play, his first big play of the night. Well, so this is a miscommunication. If you want to throw the pop pass, and. Lyle Collins, number 70, offensive tackle, was 20 yards downfield, pass blocking. <laughs> so it's, it's not going to work because it would have been called back anyway. But I like the idea. You just got to communicate what the call is. Capers, a redshirt junior, didn't play at all last year after a knee injury. Jennings, deep down the middle, an open receiver and a big gainer. First down, Traven Durrell. Been the big play wide receiver for Anthony Jennings tonight. Michael Caputo made the tackle at the Wisconsin 25. Well, it does start with the protection. There's a throwing lane created. And I love the fact that he throws where the receiver is going, not where he's been. Right in stride. 27-yard gain. 151 yards receiving for Doral at a touchdown on just three catches. He had seven catches all of last year, but he's the leading returning wide receiver. Aaron Pitch and Fournette taken down for a big loss. Back to the 36-yard line. Lost 11. And they had a play, too, now. They had a little bit of a play. Right here, it's going to be one-on-one -on -one outside. And it looked to me if the pitch was on target, Fournette had the angle on Beagle, and with his great speed, he might have beat him to the edge. Lack of execution of fundamentals under pressure that time. Looked like it was catchable, but Fournette might have had one eye on the defense as well. Certainly it wasn't perfectly placed by Anthony Jennings. Second and 21, 12 and a half to go. Still a two-score game. Wisconsin leading by 11. Jennings, single coverage, far side, and incomplete. Trey Quinn looked like a veteran, the freshman receiver, using his hands to try to get some clearance from Darius Hillary, who held his ground. Well, they rave about the intelligence of Trey Quinn, true freshman, plays all three wide receiver positions, does a good job of trying to come back. 
but a great play by Darius Hillary of attacking the hands. Not worrying about going after the ball, but attacking the hands of the intended receiver. Third down and 21. They are on the edge of field goal range, and a field goal will get them within one score. Jennings, complete. John Diarge picks up the first down and has a touchdown. The coaches talked last night about Diars's talent, particularly his strength, and you saw it there. He would have been a contributor last year as a true freshman had he not gotten hurt. Les Miles is going to go for two here, try to get within a field goal with 12.08 to go. He wants the ball on the left hash mark. Right now they still have it in the middle of the field. He's still out there. Left hash. They're not paying any attention to him. I think what the officials were saying is the ball had already been placed down, ready for play, and it was too late to move it because they certainly saw less and understood what he was saying. They have to burn a timeout. Boy, you're seeing the confidence of Jennings go on the last two. Passes right here is a frozen rope. The ball's delivered right when DRS turns around. Then you see the power and the strength and the ability to do damage with run after catch. But it's on target and in stride, Sean, which allows time for the receivers to work. And he turns into a running back once he gets the ball. He was a, he was a understudy of Jarvis Landry. He took a lot of Jarvis's work habits, put them into his work habits, and made them his own. Good guy to study under. Landry had 77 catches last year. Beckham at 59. They both were over 1,000 yards receiving. Finally, some big plays for LSU. Passes of 27 and 36 on that eight-play drive. They went 59 yards. Now they will, after the timeout, get the ball moved to the left hash mark for their two-point play. Trey Quinn, the motion man. Jennings design roll, and Quinn is wide open for the two. Fourteen unanswered points by LSU. Well designed, well executed play for the two-pointer. After scoring on one of nine possessions in the first half, LSU has scored on its last three drives. Drive number one kept going on the fake punt called by Les Miles and executed by his team. Two field goals and now a touchdown and a two-point conversion. Cameron Gamble kicks off. And that goes out of bounds. Last thing the freshman wanted to do. Let's look at the last touchdown as direct TV takes you inside the drive well again it's, it's confidence right there was a throw across the middle where he set his feet in the pocket and delivered a catchable ball to catch in stride which led to this another catchable ball allowed the arse to catch it on the move turn and run run into this touchdown and this is what I like developed a nice little touch pass we had time didn't rush it hit Trey Quinn for two-point conversion Defense is the one. After the opening drive that Wisconsin took it right down the field, their defense is settled in. They're selling out by run blitzing, taking away the running game, or slowing it down at least, of the Wisconsin Badgers. Wisconsin scored on its first possession of this half, two, three and outs. The last two, they give it to Melvin Gordon, their best player. He got three to the 38-yard line. D.J. Welter made the tackle. See Wisconsin taking their time, holding up, try to eat as much clock as possible. 
Don't you think it's way too early to be sitting on the clock? They need to score. Yeah, I, I think they need to score, but I don't think they're not going to score in a hurry because they have nobody that can get open downfield. So they're going to take their time and try to pound it. And you can see those LSU players just crowding the box. Procedure penalty. It looked like it might be a flea flicker. Full start. Offense. Number 49. Five yard penalty. Second down. Sam Arneson's been penalized a few times tonight. You mentioned it, Sean. They're crowding the box. I mean, if you can get 11 in your television screen or 10, you're in there tight and you're selling out. And the reason why they can do that is because athletically they're, they're superior to the Wisconsin skill. They have inexperienced, unproven wide receivers trying to make a play against an excellent secondary. McAvoy down the seam and it's intercepted by Jalen Mills. looking for Troy Fumagalli. He has Troy Fumagalli. The problem is Jalen Mills is coming from the inside. As McAvoy matures into a quarterback, he's going to make a back shoulder throw on this one. See that? He throws it right into the safety. If he throws to the back shoulder, they're in good, good shape. He threw to the front shoulder. Jalen Mills on his excellent cover and closing skills is able to come up with a big play for Les Miles and the Tigers. Sixth career interception for the junior from DeSoto, Texas, first turnover committed by the Badgers. McAvoy, 7 out of 18 for 41 yards in the interception in his first start. Right up the middle, Kenny Hilliard to the Wisconsin 35, and it's all LSU right now with under 11 minutes to go. Well, they got that young defensive line in there. A good job of sustaining blocks, and Kenny Hilliard does not have to make a cut. He gets the ball and runs straight ahead, north and south. Playing with a very young and inexperienced front three. Alec James, number six, redshirt freshman in there. Anthony Jennings out of the gun on first and ten. Hilliard again, another big hole. Well, you can see the impact, Chris, of the loss of Zagzebski and Herring. Gary Anderson said one of my biggest concerns is the lack of depth up front on defense. Obashi in there now. He's a red shirt freshman. Well, I think Coach Aranda's making a mistake because he has his nickel defense in there. He has his nickel linebacker, Trotter, in there, number 43. He has young pass rushers in there that are slim, not very heavy, and what you're seeing is Cam Cameron's countering by going to the running game against the nickel defense. That's a problem. It's going to be a problem. They're going to keep pounding away at that depleted line. LSU leads for the first time tonight on the touchdown by Kenny Hilliard. Colby Delahousie for a four-point lead, a big extra point here. Now a field goal can't tie it. Everything was going Wisconsin's way early in this half. But the fake field goal helped turn the game around. Three plays. All on the ground. Go 53 yards after the interception. Texas, the Advocare Texas kickoff game. Wisconsin led 24 to 7. 21 unanswered points for LSU. They lead for the first time tonight. Cameron Gamble crushes one through the back of the end zone. 
Sean, this is a great counter move by Cam Cameron, the offensive coordinator. When they go three wide receivers, Wisconsin only has two defensive linemen in the game. They're taking Trotter out, replacing him with another Trotter who's the nickel backer. So this creates too many spaces. You have a hat on a hat, and I'm telling you right now, Kenny Hilliard, nobody would have got him if they were playing two-hand touch. That is an excellent adjustment by Cam Cameron dictating the personnel that he wants on the field for Wisconsin's defense. Mm -hmm. Terrific offensive coordinator, second year at LSU after a long run in the NFL, including a brief stint as head coach of the Miami Dolphins. School record in yards per game in his first year last year at LSU. Clement. Three-yard gain for Corey Clement, upended by Lamar Lewis. Nine and a half minutes to go. A couple of three and outs and then a turnover the last three possessions for Wisconsin which has passed for just 41 yards. Last year, at least, they had one wide receiver who could make a play, Jared Aberderis. Tonight, none of these new guys who are getting a chance to play have demonstrated the ability to be a dependable, consistent weapon for Tanner McAvoy. Does raise the question, though, would you think about going to Joel Stavi? who was their starter last year. Passed for 2,400 yards, nearly 2,500, 22 touchdowns. Clement again, I'm with you, we talked about during the break, because I don't think it's a lot you can put on McAvoy. I mean, every time he throws a pass tonight, it's to somebody who is blanketed in coverage and not the least bit open. There's yeah. Stavi on the sideline. And Stavi, Sean, I mean, we watched him in Warrens. He, he struggled in Warrens. He was throwing knuckleballs. Yeah, it, it just, he didn't look right to me. And the only bad pass that McAvoy made was the last interception where he should have thrown a back shoulder fade, but he threw it right into the coverage with Mills coming over the top. Coaches think his shoulder still hurt. He injured it in the bowl game last year. Third down and four. Can they silence this crowd? Clement picks up a much needed first down for Wisconsin. Chopped down by Jalen Collins at the 36. First down, Badgers 8 10 to go, and Collins limps off. Five yard game. It's a heck of a play by Collins right there. I'm going to tell you why because they were in man coverage, and if he would have got away from Collins, He's running down the sidelines. Tried to get off, and then after limping in pain, decided he wasn't going to make it off. We Wait. talked about the lack of playmakers at wide receiver, which certainly makes it tough for the Wisconsin offensive coaches and for Tanner McAvoy. But you do have perhaps the best running back in the country, and Melvin Gordon has carried twice this half. Yeah, they, they decided to go with Clement, and I... I'm with you. I, I trust Todd McShane. Todd McShay has Melvin Gordon. You see, caught him with his leg, almost a leg whip. Yeah, that's what you get when you tackle. You yeah. not. Yeah, that's. You stick your knee out like that. Yeah. That's one of the reasons why it's against the rules. Todd you trip somebody. Yeah, and just, you're exactly right. And I'm going back to Todd. I mean, Todd is an excellent evaluator of talent. And if he has the number one running back in the country, then maybe he should be getting the touches. Mm -hmm. Now, Clement is a good player. And he made a heck of a first down right there. But, you know, you're going to go back to the film, and this is what coaches think about. They go crazy. Man, what if Melvin would have had that ball? Could he make that guy miss an open field? So it's a field thing. you got to go by feel. I mean, it's action that's so limited, it almost makes you wonder if there's something wrong with him. He's standing over there with his helmet tilted back. Collins now walking off. One luxury that LSU does have, and when you go through their depth charts and you meet with their coaches, you, you go about four deep. He'll play, he'll play, he'll play. Absolutely. He's great, he's good, he's beautiful. Yeah, they're young. <laughs> Les Miles said last night's the youngest team that he's had, but they just reload this freshman class, the number two rated recruiting class in the country. Recruiting class, he said. Eight minutes to go. Play fake. Alexander puts pressure on McAvoy. Man open in the flat. It's Austin Trailer, the junior from Columbus, Ohio, with his first catch of the night. He's one of their tight ends. Good for a nine-yard game. Uh, good play call by Andy Ludwig, the offensive coordinator, getting McAvoy out in space, giving him one read and an easy throw to make. He does throw the ball well on the run, which will be part of their offense as they progress into the season. 
part of the reason to play McAvoy was the quarterback run game, and it doesn't seem like they've tried very many design quarterback runs or even options. Second and one. First down, Clement again. That time, Wisconsin with a good surge with their offensive line. And LSU, what they usually do to counter now is they'll get nine guys up there, then they'll have a blitz run off those nine guys because they have the confidence to match up on the edges. See big number 57, Levon Godshaw. He's a true freshman playing in his first game. The coaches think he's going to be a star. As Miles said last night, I think he's Glenn Dorsey. One of the great players in LSU history. Reggie Love again, the receiver with absolutely no separation. And Dwayne Thomas broke it up. Again, the beauty of depth. Dwayne Thomas, fresh off the bench. Seeing him take in inside leverage, knowing where the help is, and to change of direction, and to go cut the ball off and attack the hands, never giving up like a good defensive back. Going right for that elbow to rip. Good throw by McAvoy, by the way. Melvin Gordon back on the field now, second and ten. Pistol look here with McAvoy taking the snap. They bring pressure. He throws it up for grabs, incomplete. The general direction of Kenzel Doe. Melvin Gordon wants to make a, a note to the NFL scouts. I can pass protect right there. He did a great job of, <laughs> of knocking down. Jamal Adams, number 33. Take a look right here. There's pass protection. Now, McAvoy didn't trust him because he threw off his back foot and almost threw the pick. Third down and 10. Six forty-seven to go. Wisconsin down now by four. Pressure off the corner. McAvoy intercepted by Ronald Martin, who gets away from Reggie Love and is forced out by Sam Arneson on the far sideline. It's the same problem that McAvoy and Love have been having all night. They're not on the same page. McAvoy's throwing to point B. Love is running to point A. And a little bit of panic right here in McAvoy. Why? Because he's thrown the fadeaway. He's throwing off of his back foot. The ball sails high. Here's Love. He's going to come down here, try to run a corner. McAvoy thinks he's going to be deeper. The safety's over the top. And you have to throw it to the outside shoulder with the safety coming from the inside. Todd? Yeah, I thought it was interesting, too. Jalen Mills, the safety who used to play corner, who had the interception a little bit earlier in the game, was the one who got pressure on the quarterback there and forced him to put the ball up a little bit early and led to the interception. So he's having a big fourth quarter. That's right what you would expect after the last drive. Power football. Try to take advantage of that depleted front. Jake Obashi, the freshman, made the stop on Terrence McGee. So back-to-back -back interceptions thrown by McAvoy. If they allow trades in college football, Wisconsin would be in the market for some wide receivers. Absolutely. Get open. Uh, they're young and, and they're trying, but I, I'm telling you, Sean, they, they, they are limited, and they will struggle to win games because eventually you have to throw the ball to win games against good teams. Well, last year they passed for 197 yards per game. Now, that was only ninth in the Big Ten, but it's 197 yards. Tonight, they passed for 50 yards. Obashi, another tackle on Kenny Hilliard. Third down and six. And it's LSU in no big hurry right now to get to the line of scrimmage. Liked the arse, number nine. Here's a blitz. And they run away from it. All kinds of room for Kenny Hillier who leaps over a tackler and goes to the Wisconsin 48. Joe Schobert made the tackle. 17 yards on the run by Hillier. 
It's a good read on the zone read by Anthony Jennings. Watch him take a look. Watch where his head is. He's seen, he sees Schobert go down inside, so let me give the ball to Hilliard. Figaro's coming up. The true freshman will make that tackle in another six games. But right now, he slips, which allows Hilliard to get an extra six, seven, eight yards. Power formation again from Cam Cameron. Two tight ends. And the eye formation and Hilliard. Spins ahead for a couple. And the clock will run under four and a half minutes to go in the fourth quarter. Let's take a look at tonight's good hands play brought to you by Allstate. Jalen Mills going up and battling the taller receiver. Umagali making a big play in a pressure situation for his team. This man whose status for the season was unknown. During the summertime, involved in an off-field episode, charged with the assault of a woman. Connor Neighbors leading the way for Kenny Hilliard. Cam Cameron said when he got to LSU a year ago, the first guy he noticed was Connor Neighbors, the fullback. Tremendous feat for a big fullback, and he said. There aren't a lot of fullbacks in the NFL anymore, but Connor Neighbors is going to be one. Yeah, he has good hands, too, and that's what Cam was talking about. And I want to go back, and, and what a great hire it was by Les Miles to bring a pro-style coordinator in, which is hard to find in college football. And he goes to the NFL, and Cam had the opportunity to come to LSU. They had been together years ago at Michigan. Movement, but no contact. Big third down and three here. Jennings the pitch. Fournette in trouble and gang tackled back at the 45. Huge play by Joe Schobert. He blew it up and then had some help. They lose four. And now Les Miles with the decision to make. Think about Gary Anderson. I'd be thinking about one of my timeouts here. Yeah, right now, they let a lot of clock go. Use them. You have all three of them. Yep. It's easier to stop the clock when you're on offense. LSU might take it all the way down and take the penalty. You see all the Wisconsin coaches, everybody's waving their hands, the safe signal. That's because they're weary, and that's what Les does to a coaching staff because he's liable to fake it at any time, at any point, in any game. We'll go back to that Delay big game. Punt. Kicking team, number 38. Five-yard penalty, fourth down. They're down 24-7, to seven, everything going against them, about to punt it away. They faked the punt on fourth and two, got it by two yards, went down and kicked the field goal. And the game has not been the same since. Everything was going Wisconsin's way. Prior to that, everything's gone for LSU since. Well, you had the Les Miles first game at LSU where he faked the punt out of the end zone, right? You were telling me that earlier today. Out at Arizona State. Game that got moved to Tempe. Early in the game, deep in his own end, fake one. I said, well, here's a guy who's not afraid. <laughs> New constituency of <laughs> LSU fans trying to impress. Kenzel Doe makes the fair catch on the punt by Jamie Keene. 39 yards on the punt. One last try for Wisconsin. First and 10, Wisconsin. 90 yards to go to take the lead. All three timeouts, 223 for Tanner McAvoy in his first collegiate start at quarterback. Option pitch to Gordon and he's belted out of bounds by Quan Alexander. And they don't even give him out of bounds. They wind the clock. Do the officials after a two-yard loss. I'll tell you, Quan Alexander's done a good job this second half. Merritts misses him on a chop block because of the speed of Alexander. You have nothing. I'm not sure the Badgers realized the clock was still running. They went back to huddle and all of a sudden they got out of the huddle in a hurry. Second and 12, low snap. McAvoy back into the end zone. Throws. And a diving attempt by Sam Arneson. The longest completion of the night for Wisconsin is 14 yards on a pass to Alex Erickson back in the second quarter. You see that ball take a nosedive. He's panicking a little bit in the pocket because he's throwing off his back foot. He's not getting and driving that throw with his legs. That's why that ball was low. I'm playing it safe now if I'm LSU. I know you've been successful blitzing, but you want to protect the sticks and play the odds. 
Three wide receivers. Can any of them get open? That's the big question for the Badgers. McAvoy. Throws incomplete. Arneson couldn't hang on. Seems like every pass attempt now is an act of desperation for Tanner McAvoy. And Gary Anderson with the decision to make. He's going to punt with all three of his timeouts left on fourth and 12. Again, he's playing the percentages. He knows that. <laughs> they keep, the longest has been a 14-yarder, and that was a little bit of a catch run also. Myers had trouble punting the last two times. Nobody back deep for LSU. A little bit surprised by that. You cost yourself field position here. You just catch the ball. They would have saved about 20 yards. Yeah, normally you have a safety back there to help you. 57-yard punt down by Jordan Frederick. 126 to go. And Gary Anderson turned around on first and 10 for LSU. Kenny Hilliard, a big seven-yard gain. Wisconsin uses its first timeout. Leaving them with two, but now just three yards to go for a first down. And you would think, Chris, in this situation, one first down should put it away for LSU. And be a ball game. And what a great job by John Chavis and that defense to make the adjustments, realizing that Wisconsin is ineffective throwing the football, selling out on the run to stop the run. And they did stop the run against Wisconsin the second half. And Anthony Jennings answered the bell. Came out, played under pressure, played well, and delivered strikes that created scoring opportunities for the Tigers. And you have to give Les Miles credit. There's John Chavis, the outstanding defensive coordinator. But his boss helped turn the game around. Typical Les into the bag of tricks. Yep. Take punt. And the game turned and has never turned back. They're riding Kenny Hilliard. Talked about sometimes you just need to ride the hot hand. That's what Cam Cameron said last night. Hilliard, 88 rushing yards in this quarter, and he's up to 105 for the game. It's good for him to put his time in. Senior. Tough. And the offensive line settled in too, Sean. They've been able to create some holes. And they've been helped by some Wisconsin injuries up front. No doubt. That's a big stop by Wisconsin there. It'll set up third down at about three. It was 17-7 Wisconsin. At the half, they scored in their first possession to make it 24 to 7. And it looked like LSU was going to punt down by 17. The fake punt on fourth down and two. Little linebacker, Kendall Beckwith, took the short snap. I've always said when you need two tough yards, give it to the middle linebacker. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Have you always said that? <laughs> By the way, if it stays this way, it would be the 22nd time in Les Miles' nine-plus years that LSU has rallied from a fourth-quarter deficit to win. You know what I think he's excited about is, is Anthony Jennings. And, and Anthony started slow, real slow. And he came on and showed a lot of poise in the second half and delivered some strikes and long footballs. Then they got to the intermediate routes, and he was able to deliver those. And he's only going to grow from this experience. And to get a comeback win, that gets his teammates believing in Anthony Jennings. And that's as important as anything. Ginormous play here. If they pick up the first down, it's ball game over. If they don't, there's a chance for Wisconsin. And Hilliard lunged for the first down. So LSU is going to extend its FBS record. Regular season non-conference winning streak to 46 games. And for a lot of the night, it looked like that streak was going to end tonight. The Badger fans can't believe it. They were up 24-7 to looking at an LSU punt. It turned out to be a fake. And now the Badgers are going to see their streak of 16 consecutive season opening wins end. The third longest such streak in college football. And we talked about college football playoff which we're going to talk about the whole season long and resume enhancing wins this is a win that is going to look very nice on the resume of LSU at the end of the season they have a very tough gauntlet to run through obviously in the SEC most of their 
seemingly most difficult games are on the road at Auburn, at Florida, at Texas A&M. They do get Alabama at home and a very good Ole Miss team at home. But that's a tough schedule. It, it is. And the, the good thing with a young football team, which has been established here tonight, is that you have Sam Houston and University of Louisiana Monroe coming up. And that gives your guys a chance to get game speed reps. That might get Fournette involved in the ball game. You're going to get Malachi Dupree back, who should help him in their depth in the receiving core if he recovers from his leg injury. So they're a young team that's going to grow, and they'll build confidence from this comeback win. We talk about how both teams' receiving cores were wiped out by the NFL. Landry and Beckham to the NFL for LSU. Aberderis for Wisconsin. But LSU has guys who are ready to step in. Doral made some huge plays tonight. Looks like Quinn and Diars are going to be weapons where you just wonder where Wisconsin's going to turn out wide to make plays in the receiving game. They're hoping they have some freshmen who are going to come along quickly, but none of them were a factor tonight. And you know the loss of Pedersen last year also, the fine receiving tight end that Wisconsin also normally has. last non-conference regular season loss for LSU was back in 2002 before Les Miles arrived at Baton Rouge. Nick Saban was the coach then. 46 consecutive regular season non-conference wins. Final score of the Advocare Texas kickoff LSU 28 and Wisconsin 24. Stay tuned now for Sports Center for Chris Spielman, Todd McShay and our terrific crew Sean McDonough saying so long from Houston, Texas.